Hello everyone, welcome to today's current affairs session of Civilspedia. The topics we are going to see today is National Cow Commission, National Grass Grid, and India Norway Ocean Dialogue, then Swine Flu, and with respect to editorial topic is India Nepal Trade Treaty. First one, National Cow Commission, or also known as Rashtriya Kamdhenu Aayog. It is recently the news with respect to this Cow Commission is the Cabinet Committee has approved for set up this Cow Commission. And the main objective of this cow commission is to develop our welfare of this cows. And this commission will work with the collaboration with other government institutions based on this research and development of indigenous cows and as well as this breeding and rearing of the cows so that it will have more enhancement of welfare of the cows as well as it will focus on the research of organic manure and biogas thereby enhance the agriculture productivity of our India. And apart from that, the recent interim budget has allocated 750 crore for this National Cow Commission mission. And apart from this, the, what is the major impact of having this kind of a cow commission, separate commission for a cow? Because it will give a huge impact for the growth of the livestock sectors. It will be helpful for the animal husbandry and thereby support the marginal society of Indian farmers. Because most of the Indian farmers are believe on this livestock factors only. So by having a cow commission, it will have focus, special focus on productivity, increasing the productivity of a cow and other livelihood livestock so that it will give benefit for the marginal society of the country. And apart from that, it will reduce this increase, it will reduce the injury that is happening to the people in the road accidents due to the stray animals that is happening in this road. So it will have a both impact of this reducing the road accidents as well as it will have help the improvement in the livestock sector also. And the next topic is national gas grid. The recently, we have a, already we have a national gas pipeline that has been operational for up to the kilometers of 16,788 kilometers. While we are planning to develop much more gas line for the about 14,239 kilometers. So it will have a comprehensive gas uh, connection line. So this national gas grid has been major objective to have comprehensive gas pipeline that is connecting north, south as well as east, west of India. And apart from that, this gas pipeline has been authorized by Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board. This regulatory board authorizes Gale to develop this northeastern gas grid because northeastern is one of the area where this potential of this gas grid is much more, but there was a lagging of this pipeline. So by having this proper gas grid pipeline, we will have connect this northern India with the rest of this country also. Thereby, the development of the northern India will be assured. So this PNGRB, that is this regulatory board, has authorized a scale to develop national northeastern gas pipeline, that by connecting this Baroli to Guwahati pipeline as an integral part of this Jagdishpur, Haldi and Bakaro Damra project, so that it will have much integrated national level gas pipeline connected. And apart from this, this petroleum gas and natural gas regulatory board has authorized Indra Dhanush gas grid. This Indra Dhanush gas grid is one of the things that is combination, that is a joint venture of five PSUs, public sector units, that is this IOCL, ONGC, Gale, OAL, and NRL. These five PSUs has been joint, has put together the joint venture that is called as Indra Dhanush Gas Grid Limited. This Indra Dhanush Gas Grid Limited has focused on how to connect this eight northeastern states with the national gas grid so that it will have much more integrated gas grid connections that by lead to the development of a northeastern state at much faster level because this northeastern state is one of the area where this energy deficit is much more so by having a proper gas grid connection it will give much more enhancement to this infrastructure as well as energy security for the northeastern people thereby it will lead to the development of a northeastern people at a much faster level and the third topic is india norway ocean dialogue recently norwegian prime minister has visited india so there was a major dialogue between this india and norway with respect to this ocean so there recently there was a MOU that is Memorandum of Understanding has been signed with respect to this ocean dialogue. Thereby we are focused to set up a joint task force for this blue economy. This blue economy is nothing but it is how to sustainably use this ocean resources for the development of economic growth of a country. So that is called the blue economy that is totally depending on this ocean resources by having a sustainable use of this ocean resources. This Norway economy is 70% of the Norway economy depends on this blue, econ blue economy only. And apart from this, this Norway is the global leader with respect to this blue economy. So by having a treaty or dialogue with this Norway, we India can learn much more things about how to improve our blue economy. So what are the impact of having this dialogue my MOU is? First thing is it will strengthen the trade between India and Norway. Because this bilateral treaty or treaty, we have 
1.2 billion dollars and we have much more area to exploit between this india and norway so by having this kind of a dialogue treaties we will have much more enhanced development in the with respect to this trade and apart from that it will contribute to the food security of india because by having strengthening this india's blue economy it will have much more food securities enhancement because india is depending on this fish for the protein deficiencies of indian people so by having more amount of fisheries and marine resources by utilizing properly of india if india can satisfy this energy needs as well as this food security and apart from that this will have an by how we can have an this food security is by having a much more advanced technologies implementing from this norway so because this norway has a huge new technologies with respect to this aquaries and fisheries which india lagging much more lot so by having a treaty or dialogue between this norway we can learn new techniques and thereby adapt according to the our indian ocean needs and what are the other things with respect to this india and norway with respect to this ocean missions is we already have had three arctic missions that by visited the norway in 2007 8 and 9 and already we have established a research station himadri in this northern uh, norway island of spitsbergen and apart from this we already have a trade impact treaty that is tepa that is trade and economic partnership agreement this trade and economic partnership agreement is nothing but india has joined with eftf that is european free trade agreement in this european free trade agreement four countries has been part of it switzerland no Iceland and Liechtenstein these four countries has been part of this european free trade agreement and india has joined with this free trade agreement thereby it becomes a tepa and this is one of the important thing that with respect to india and norway and apart from this india and norway india has has been supported by norway with respect to this wto case which has been put against the us on this steel and aluminium duties that shows india and norway in much more friendly manner and apart from that norway is supporting india to get a permanent seat in un security council as well as there was much more things that has been properly understand between this india and norway and the next topic is swine flu there there was a recent sudden outbreak in swine flu with respect to this rajasthan and new delhi so what is the reason why this has been much more impacted of this swine flu right now and what are the things we have to curtain we have to do to curtain this swine flu outbreak the first thing is this swine flu is nothing but it is a respiratory disease that has been caused by h1n1 virus which can be transmitted through this infected pig and the most dangerousness of this h1n1 virus is it is airborne that is it spread through air and through the physical contact also and first case that has been the swine flu has has been reported in india in 2009 and 2016 is one uh, it's a year in which there was the largest number of swine flu case registered and last year it was a very low but this year it was coming very much higher level of uh, swine flu cases that have been observed especially with respect to this rajasthan and delhi why this year that has been severe outbreak is first and foremost reason is there was a prolonged winter season especially in the northern india that leads to more extension of this shelf life of the virus that leads to cause more and more outbreak in this northern states and apart from this the lack of awareness especially among this rural population made rural population vulnerable to this swine flu disease and there was no proper pre vaccination especially in rajasthan and the bordering states so that makes the easy outbreak of this swine flu disease in these states and there was only symptomatic treatment not pro proper treatment to cure completely this swine flu disease that makes more and more aware. people have started to get affected by this swine flu and the last topic is india nepal trade treaty India and Nepal has shared a boundary of 1850 kilometers that by five indian states has bordered the shares of nepal that are the five indian states is uttarakhand up bihar west bengal and sikkim that by these five states have much more cultural deeper cultural contact with this nepal that by having a deeper cultural bond this leads to much more deeper amount of a trade between these five states and this nepal so this india nepal trade is one of the thing that has been started earlier much in the ancient india period itself and in 1950 we have put a treaty of peace and friendship thereby enhance this free movement of a trade between india and nepal as per this article 6 under this treaty we have a national treatment and equal privileges for the each other citizens in each other soils so nepalis will be equally treated in india and indians will be equally treated as a nepalis in nepal so thereby having a equal treatment equal privileges to both the countries of the people on each other soil and apart from this this article 7 will provide free movement of india and nepal is between the indo nepal border so it will give more and more enhancement especially with respect to this trade because by having a free movement like indian people don't need to have a passport to go to nepal and nepal people don't need to have a passport to come to india 
just a voter ID and passport, passbook it, itself much more enough to pa enter this Indo-Nepal border. That makes more free movement. By having a more freedom, the trade has been enhanced. So what are the issues that has been with respect to this Nepal is recently um, the political dramas between this Indo-Nepal has hurdled this trade movement. And apart from this, we have much other things that economically affecting this India. And much of this Nepal has been dependent on the India, especially for this petroleum, automobile spare parts and the medicine. So that makes India, that, is, that makes Nepal to be much more dependent on India. So this, we have in 1999, we have signed bilateral trade treaty and transit for having a regulating this unauthorized trade between this India and Nepal. So it has been reviewed every 10 years. So in 2009, it was reviewed and in 2019, it has been again re-reviewed, thereby to increase how this trade between India and Nepal can be go in a much smoother way. And what are the India's concern with respect to this Indo-Nepal trade treaty is? First thing is, India wanted to have an open border, while Nepal wanted to have more restricted border. So this will hurdle this India's movement of trade to this Nepal. So India has wanted to have more open door policies. And second thing is, most of their weapons to this moist has been transmitted through this Indo-Nepal border only. So India wanted to have cut in this amount of uh, weapons to be transmitted to the Maoist through this Indo-Nepal border. These are the major concerns of India with respect to this India-Nepal treaty, this recent MOUs that we have been undergoing this talking. And with respect to this Nepal concern is, first and foremost thing is, Nepal wanted to increase much of India's investment in Nepal because more India's investment is account for 40% of GDP of Nepal. So by having more and more investment of uh, India in Nepal will lead to development of the Nepal. And apart from this, Nepal wanted to reduce the trade deficit with respect with respect to India because Nepal is completely depending, majority of the Nepal is completely economies depend on India. And this leads to much more trade deficit. And the Nepal wanted to have reduced this trade deficit. Thereby they wanted to have free access for this in Nepal is Nepal uh, products in India. And apart from this, Nepal wanted to reduce this non-tariff that has been put India on this Nepal projects, Nepal goods. And apart from this, Nepal wanted to have a preferential treatment for the neighbors. Thereby, it will give more and more surplus amount of uh, facilities for this Nepalese to have trade with India. So, Nepal's major concern is to reduce this trade deficit. That is the major objective that has been talking with respect to review of this Nepal-Indo-Nepal trade treaty. With that thing, we will end today's current session. Thank you. Have a nice day.